everyone, welcome back to Frank Film Club with me, Hannah, Lowry and Maisie. We're really excited to talk today about The Swimmers, which is on Netflix and came out in 2022 and was directed by Sally Al Hassani. And the story is about two Syrian sisters who flee their war-torn home in Damascus, I'm reading this verbatim, um, swim for hours in choppy Mediterranean seas to reach Greece and asyl as asylum se seekers before going on to compete at the Rio Olympic Games. I didn't know anything about this film before I read that synopsis that I found on Google and I was like, okay, wow, this is very interesting. And then I remember the story about the Mardini sisters. Um, the film is about real life sisters, Sarah and Yezra Mardini, um, who are played by Natalie Issa and Man Manal Issa. But before we get into all of that, how have you girls been? Yeah, I've been really well. I have just got back from a weekend away with my family in Anglesey, which oh. was really lovely. And we stayed in an old pub, which was hilarious. Yeah. You were so, telling me about this. Yeah. You, you had different nights planned with oh, your family. We did. We had a painting night, a fancy dress night, a, like all sorts of different bits going on. It was great. I had a great time. How good is that? Your family is very fun. You'll have yeah. to come to the next day. Okay, great. Because yeah. it's quite good fun. Please adopt me as soon as possible. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I've been good. Um, I was also with my family recently. I was with my mum. She just got a new dog. And so I've got my dog, Sunny, but my mum looks after him a lot because I travel. And so she wanted to get a dog. And so I was there and I was there for like moral support for Sonny while this new puppy came into his oh. life. And he's actually been coping with it really well. And I'm really proud of him because uh, he's a strange little dog sometimes. He's, he's quite sensitive, you know? Yeah. So it, we really had to do it in a good way. And yeah, he's liking the little pup. The little pup wants to play all the time and Sonny's a little bit like, no. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine him to be a bit like, Please. Please, you're a puppy. What you and like Sunny used to be such an annoying puppy to other dogs. So yeah. I'm like, this used to be you, Sunny. That's karma. Yeah. That's karma. Yeah. I really want a dog another dog. Mm. I yeah. I've not been up to anything apart from just hanging out with my dog. So mm -hmm. that's it was yeah. Scrolling. Yeah. Like the dog's home. For yeah. More dogs. For more dogs, also basically. Posting hilarious dog Instagram content. Oh yeah. Well, if not anything else, it's good to have a dog for taking the piss out of them on Instagram. Yeah, it really cracks me up every post you do about him. No. He's such he's a so small. small and pathetic. He is but like small. in the best way. It's like I can never really tell what he's thinking. I mean, you know, sometimes like, he's like, scared can, all the time. Like your dog, like I can always tell that it's like, it's like happening. But with Teddy, he's just always like. Oh, that's a really good impression. <laughs> that was really good. He's like, um, what's happening? But your next role should be Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> living what it's like living on your beanbag <laughs> in your house <laughs> okay great i'll speak to him about the rights of the movie and we'll get that sorted which leads me so nicely on <laughs> to the swimmers so smooth wow okay i actually feel hot at how good that was um so the film is about real life sisters the mardini sisters who as i say fled um damascus in syria uh and became refugees and went to Greece and then Germany um, and then Yusra Maldini um, she ended up competing in the Rio Olympics um, so it's a yeah a very uplifting story but comes from um, a lot of pain and I feel like I learned a lot about the process of becoming a, a refugee and um, and that through this film um, yeah what did you think about it? I really, really enjoyed watching this film. I've recommended it to my sister, who's going to watch it tonight. And uh, I feel like there's not enough films made about this topic because it's such a, it's a very relevant to now and has been for a long time. Um, and so I'm just like really glad that this film has been made. And it is really uplifting. And I know that's not the case with a lot of these stories, but that's why more should be told because it's so important that we see this. Mm. I thought it was really good. Yeah, I thought it was so nice to see a story about um, the Syrian war and like Syrian refugees, but like a, a human story of like two people and you can kind of really see the human cost of like situations like this. Um, and it have an incredibly uplifting kind of like finale. Mm. Um, but yeah, I really, I really enjoyed watching it. And I too have recommended it to a lot of people. It's like, uh, yeah. It's a great movie. Yeah. It's a great movie. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely something about it feeling 
or a film like this being able to communicate something which is really human about the masses of people who go through this and I through this of like had looked into the numbers and it's something like 6.8 million people have had to leave this place Syria yeah. um, and we watched for summer and we did an episode on that a couple of series ago and I feel like that really opened my eyes to like the reality of what it's like to stay there but this was very interesting to see, see that journey mm. so initially the sisters um sarah and yusra they didn't want to sell the rights to this film and yusra wanted to focus on the olympics and a lot of producers were saying you need to do this while the story's hot and whilst you're going to be in the olympics and yusra didn't want to do that she mm. wanted to like focus on the swimming mm. um and then the film got made um, through a lot of conversations and it was on the basis that there were um, some refugees working in the crew and involved throughout the process and the sisters were really involved in the process. Good. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, what did you think of the tone of the film? I, I was quite surprised at how upbeat it was, but then I was like, of course it's upbeat because like as much, even when people do go through the like most horrible things, there are still like mo like human moments of light and an enjoyment and like you still ha find enjoyment in like dancing and singing and being with your family and your, like your sister and and so I think it they it was quite true not in yeah in parts like that is true to what it would be it was obviously like it was quite uplifting and I and I do wonder if some people would go well that's not true to so many stories which yes it's not but this isn't all of the stories and there should be more stories like this so that we get the mixture but it just felt very upbeat and emotional mm. and mm. yeah what did you think yeah I I think that um some of the musical moments like there was a lot of Sia tracks um, and there were moments where I was like kind of surprised as well, but then was also like, why am I surprised? Because even if this is your reality, like you still want to find light and shade day to day. And then as it kind of progressed, I feel like it just was like balanced really well. Like there were moments of like real painful honesty. And then like the next moment you'd see something like more uplifting and human. Mm. Um, or like not that it's all human feelings it's all like the human design but yeah i was i was a little worried because that's not my favorite thing when a track really is saying exactly what's happening it's like it doesn't happen that often in films um and i think that there's like a reason for that because it it can feel i'm like being told what i need to feel at this moment but then because this is like a real story and these are the real girls and these are the actual songs that were like playing at that time it's like i kind of then sort of forgot about that and just got into like this like there the like the film as it is rather mm. than trying to be like oh i wish it was more you know what i mean yeah and and i also think that that like it's a it's a netflix film if you want if you want loads of people to see it you need to make it quite commercial and i think those bits that music does make it way more commercial and makes it way more accessible and enjoyable so then hopefully more people will watch it because they should watch this film yeah and so I'm like okay I'll, I'm on board for that reason yeah I think that's a really interesting point it's like a very commercial movie even though it's probably if you like I think some people would be like I don't I can't think about this because I don't know it's too painful or they're too ashamed or like whatever it is like and this movie actually just becomes, um, yeah, something that's like, yeah, I don't, I, I feel kind of wrong talking about it like this, but I guess like it's a movie, right? And we, this is like what we do. But yeah, it, it felt, um, yeah, it felt like more marketable. Oh God, that sounds so icky to say. No, <laughs> I think, <laughs> but I think there's a, there, yeah, there's a reason. It's by design, and I think there's a few things in this film that make it marketable, not just for um, British or US audience, or but for um, Arabic audience as well, because it's half in English, half in Arabic, mm, really. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I felt like before I watched this film and before I read the synopsis, I was wondering, I thought this film was gonna have a certain feel because the director, Sally Al-Hassani, who d directed My Brother the Devil, 
um, and it was cast by Shaheen Beg. Oh. So I was thinking it was going to be very particular tone. Yeah. And then when I read the synopsis, I was like, how are they going to balance that with, um, with the reality of what it is? And then this uplifting story. And throughout, I was thinking, I was sort of terrible to say, but I was like waiting for them to trip up with the balance of the tone. But I think that they did it well and I think that they um have made something which is commercial I, I was on on the train the other day and I saw a woman who is like an older woman and was just on her way through Wales and she was watching it on her iPad and I feel like it has like a big audience yeah. definitely yeah yeah that's so lovely yeah yeah did you say we're doing this on our podcast what I tapped think? on the shoulder no okay, I <laughs> On her phone. Yeah. On the, on I put iPad. it across the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. So, I want to speak about the casting. Yeah. Um, did you notice anything major when you were watching it? That it's a major. Well, I think it's major. I think it's really cool. I wondered, are they actually they're sisters? They're sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did think that at one point I was like, wait, I thought that I was sort of getting mixed up with them. Uh, and yeah. then I was like, oh my gosh, they look really, really similar. It took me a sec. Really similar mouth here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And just like shaped face and yeah. I actually knew that already because I work with a guy called George and he actually has a podcast called Before the Lights, so if you're listening to this and you're intrigued. Um, but he works with actors before they go on to screen to change their body shape and all sorts. And I was working with him. He had been training the two sisters, um, yeah, to change their body type because they went, they, they sort of, their bodies changed throughout the movies, uh, throughout the movie, um, sort of losing weight, gaining muscle, that sort of thing. So I knew that they were sisters because I had um, chatted with him about it. That's really interesting. Mm. The girls couldn't swim before they got this role. <gasps> oh, wow. They couldn't swim at all. And in fact, the real Yusra, she was a body double in some of the swimming scenes, which is really lovely. I did <gasps> wonder that. Really? I was like, who is actually swimming here? And it was her. Oh, my God, that's so cool. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, yeah I love so that. so cool. I had no idea that they... I, did, okay, I didn't know that bit. That's amazing. Um, and how lovely that the real Yusra could be they're part like, of the film. They're that's like cool. best friends. Like, these <gasps> two girls and then these two girls. I've heard them in interviews, and they're so, like... Oh. They're so funny together. And they're, they're from very similar backgrounds. So the casting was they were looking for girls from Syria. Um, the process from what I've heard was really difficult because it's hard with paperwork and they were shooting across quite a lot of um, locations. Yeah. I think it was like six or seven countries oh for this film. God. So then they started to look at other Arabic speaking um, countries. They brought in uh, Manal Issa who is a Lebanese actor and has been in quite a lot of things. And when they were doing the audition with her, she initially didn't want to do it because she can't swim. She read the script, she was like, or read the synopsis and was like, this isn't for me. Came into the casting, they loved her, and they were talking about the sisterhood in the film and she brought up her sister, who at the time wasn't an actor. They convinced her to come in an audition and she was, yeah, they were just obviously great. That is so interesting. So who was who was originally who was the actor and who was the non-actor? Oh, oh guess. Oh, mm. that's really. I mean, instinct, you know. do you know? No, I don't. Oh. I want to say that Yusra, who is. I was going to guess Sarah. Well, I was going to say uh, because only because she's like the main character. Surely she was like the actor, but I actually think that Sarah is amazing in this. So I don't know. I was going to guess. That's um, Manal, who plays Sarah, yes, yeah. the actress. Correct. Ah. Correct. She's amazing. So that's quite mad then that Natalie yeah. was non actor and became the lead in this film. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. Isn't do, that great? Do you know what the thinking was in that? Or well, they just suit the char those characters better? Well, um, just because the, in real yeah. life their older sister is is oh. yeah oh, right. so they saw they were seeing Manal because she was the right age for Sarah right and then they were like we're looking still for the younger for for someone to play Yusra yeah um they were talking about sister and said would would she come in and now she's um she's uh yeah she's she's working as an actor oh. from from what I I think she's doing other things as well but she's yeah doing some other bits that's so really cool like, yeah she's fab they're, they're both, both so great yeah. and how lovely as well that um 
Natalie could have like her sister there to like help her through that who had like a little bit more experience because even though it is like Yesra's story um it like the two of them being together and like Sarah really kind of like fights for Yesra so it's like a good like a good reality yeah. to have behind the other reality <laughs> yeah and talking of reality as well like they they connected with the story because they had to leave Lebanon in 2006. Mm. So they understand or, yeah, they understand the systems of right. m not on the same scale at all. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just, I just love that as a story. So what, what are the things that you really loved about this film and what were the things that you maybe would have liked to have seen more of? Um, I, I just feel, I felt quite emotional watching these two sisters whose bond, by the way, was incredible, which I'm now realizing is probably because they're actually mm. sisters, um, and excellent actors as well. But like, they go through such a journey. I, I was like, is this a true story? And I was like, wait, it doesn't matter if it, even if it wasn't a true story, this is still amazing. And like, we should just be seeing more stories like this anyway. But then it is a true story, so that is incredible. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? Well, you just never see any women from the Middle East on screen. Yeah. In lead roles. Yeah. And the fact that it's a story of triumph and hope and uh, amongst, you know, the, the reality of what these particular women had to go through, I just think that's just so, so rare. And, um, yeah, that we definitely need to see more of. Yeah, I think that like the story that people wrote about and that everyone wanted to like tell was, you know, focused more on the Olympics. But I think like seeing the journey of like what these two girls like really, really went through in order to get to that, like, you know, that um, that hopeful moment, I think was really powerful and really important to see. Um, because you can't, you can't just look at the celebration without looking at like the, j like the journey that it takes to get there. Mm. Um, and yeah, I felt like up until that point, I, I hadn't really, um, I hadn't seen so many of the like real human stories of like what it really takes to like seek refuge in another country. And, um, yeah. I thought that it was really... I liked how much of the film was spent there versus, like, the... Yay, and now she won. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I think that's what we all loved about For Summer as well, mm. was the moments of, like, lightness in, like, all of that awful... Like, the, they're walking across the border and they're having a very normal teenage com conversation between Sarah and the boy that they meet along the way. Yeah. Uh, just all of those moments of like, you are actually still a teenager. Yeah, which like we never really get, I think, in like media. You know, mm -hmm. you never really get that when you read the news, listen to the yeah. news or whatever. And that human story, I think it's just so, it's so important mm. for us to like just have like compassion and humanity about what's going on in the world because it's f like frighteningly easy to like just not think about it like yeah. that you know you can avoid that it's so infuriating to watch as well when they are like stuck in this stuck in these places been been like so desperate that they have to go on a boat that is hardly even a boat like mm. it's just not and go it's just it's just awful um but then what does slightly annoy me, not, what annoys me is that this is like one of the only films that we're seeing about this kind of story. And it's about someone who has amazing talent, which is amazing. Like, it, on, I'm so glad that I have seen this film, but also like think about the cousin, N Nissa, mm. who is like, if I wasn't, if only if I was a Mardini sister, but he, do, he doesn't know how to swim. He doesn't like have a big talent. And there's a, or, or may, and like there's so many people th in that position that do have great talents, but just haven't managed to find that way out. Like the Mardini sisters did, or like mm. Yusra did. And 
their stories need to be told as well. And I just mm. really, really hope that m they do get told. Not putting this st story down at all because it is excellent. But just but like- we need to see yeah. more. 6.8 million people have had to leave Syria. I've seen, and I watch so much, I've seen two programs or films where I see that image and it's like had a real effect on me that it's been like a long enough scene to like show the gravity of the situation. Um, and it's so it's just so many people's reality. And the thing that you were saying, it, it, there's a few things in the film that actually weren't true to their story. Okay. And the sisters were a little bit conflicted in like telling the truth or like versus showing, but the reason why Sally, the, the director wanted to keep a lot of these like um, other moments that's not true to their story, but is true to a lot of people's story who go through this is to show the breadth of like the experience. Right. Mm. And um, men get treated like 10 to like, everything is so difficult in this process, but men get treated like 10 times more difficult mm. than women and children mm -hmm. because they're not thought of um, and prioritized in any way, which, you know, that's the system that that you know it prioritizes women and children these things but um they wanted to highlight that that right. you know a lot of men have a very 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 difficult time mm. well i think they did do that well because it did just make me go like i want to see that story as mm. well yeah so fair play for making sure that that was in there the only thing that i i would have liked to have seen just a little bit more of was them the moment that they did swim because they swam for three hours in the in the sea close to Greece. So I think the journey on the boat should have been 45 minutes. Mm. And then they had to get off because it was like malfunctioning and they swam for three three hours. Oh, oh and God. I think it would have been, I just would have liked to see a little bit more of that. But then I also think ha that would have been quite difficult because it would have been like this. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And like swimming, I just, maybe it's not the right thing to do. I suppose for if they're going for this commercial film, if it then became this really long scene suddenly it's a it's a lot bleaker or maybe not bleak it's just a very different film mm. and maybe if they're just going for we want people to actually see this story that wasn't the way to do it yeah mm. but I agree that's like such a massive thing yes there was one moment where i do think that was the most um jarring was and i think it's the, what you're talking about with the seer track the i'm unstoppable because we see a scene which is really awful with the Russian bombing, mm. and then it like this exact scene afterwards, and she's doing the she's like mm. gonna start training. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of that. It like maybe could have been a bit more nuanced. Yeah. Do you know what's weird? There was another film that we've watched before that I don't really want to say what it was because no. I feel bad. But they had a mega seer track on as well. And just I like, it's so, it. yeah. And it was so overpowering. It was like, it was too much. And like, maybe seer songs are just too much for some films. Like, because mm. they are quite over. Maybe not all of them. But that's weird that that's, they've stood out both times. Yeah, I was thinking that. Because I think that like, it is really empowering to listen to seer songs, like on, on your headphones. And like, when you're going about your life. But it just somehow doesn't translate to mm. like, being in a movie even though you really want it to because like when you have your headphones on it feels like you're in a movie yeah. right but it just it just somehow something just doesn't quite work I don't think that's so interesting and very very true the sisters they were asked what were you listening to around the time that you were Sia. in Syria and then you fled and it was it was Sia yeah. Yeah. that's why it's in there yeah yeah see that's that that's when when I was thinking about it I'm like that makes a lot of sense. Mm. So then I was like, I'm okay with it. Like, I'm not gonna let this, you know, disrupt my viewing experience. Cause like I do, I think that her tracks are iconic and mm. like they do define a generation. Yeah, for sure. Of people, not movies. <laughs> <laughs> Please God. <laughs>
That's a really good question. I think my personal taste is something which feels a lot more truthful and plain, more. like telling a story more plainly than than this potentially without the influence of anything that feels commercial to me. Mm. Um, but I think it really is, that doesn't make me appreciate this film any less. No. I think it's different needs for different stories and different needs for different audiences. And if that means that people see the story, then like I'm like, I like that. But for mm. like personal taste, I like something which feels like what I was expecting, directed by Sally Al, Al Hassani mm. and cast by Shaheen Baig. I just was expecting that. Mm -hmm. I'm really similar, which is quite funny because I don't think I'd say that for many other uh types of story that i would i do just kind of want to have like the plain less like imposing yeah um not experimental not like blonde was like very experimental yeah. and that's sort of she said was very information heavy um, actually no maybe that was more maybe that's a bit more along the lines of what it was but yeah not too imposing yeah yeah it's interesting because i even though i thought this one would be like entirely different to something like blonde like the bits that are like heightened um it's like still has the same effect on how you watch it you go is this real is this not like you know what i mean even though it's like far more real than blonde. i don't i don't mean to like compare those two like that but it's like it could when you watch something like she said you're like this is real and like everything you know there's nothing that feels like m a movie Mm. like a movie <laughs> <laughs> so like we've managed to get that into every episode yeah. <laughs> it's, as far as like real stories go this one feels like a movie but it is a real story yeah but he has a point I'm like learning no I get it go. he has a point yeah. yeah it does feel like a movie this wasn't made over Covid was it I f because it came out I feel I like there's still I feel like there's still films coming out that were made in COVID time, but this feels like there's way too many people for it to have been made in COVID. And a lot of locations as yeah. well. Yeah, maybe I not. I thought it was ma made in 2021. It was stalled in 2020 because of COVID. So it right. was on that train yeah. already. So I feel like yeah. it, it was a COVID film in oh, some right. regards. Yeah. Some of the callbacks where they start, where they, where they dance again, I was thinking, oh, they're on their own. They're very spread out from other people. And I thought there were moments like that where I was like, oh, was that a COVID choice? Do you know what I mean? Some of the callbacks when... Not like callbacks, but like um, there's a couple of moments throughout the film where you see them dancing and sort of like having memories and like flashbacks. Mm. Um, and they were like alone. Mm. But like you easily could have had that not, yeah. you know. Yeah, maybe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And even at the beginning when they're on the rooftop, everyone's there, but it's like very empty. Mm. There were just moments That's where true. I thought, oh, is that a COVID thing? Yeah. I think it was, uh, um, yeah, it was definitely during that time. Yeah, of course. The location, so it was shot in the UK, Belgium, Turkey, Brazil, Greece, oh. Syria, Germany. My goodness. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, I got that list off IMDb and it's a trusted source. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, final thoughts. On the swimmers. This is such an important film, and I really hope people go and watch it because it is an enjoyable watch, but it also is like very informative and like it will kind of just open your eyes to something that maybe, you know, is um, not so easily consumable in like the news and in media because you don't know what's real and what's not. This is a real story, these are real women, and this is what they went through, and um, it's a really like uplifting. Uh, this, you know, really uplifting outcome at the end. Mm. Um, completely agree. And I feel, yeah, exactly the same. It makes me so annoyed with myself sometimes. Watch, like watching this film, I'm like, well, I'm just sat here thinking about myself trying to make, do my career. And I'm just like, what? Like, it doesn't make sense when you hear stories like this. So I think everyone should watch it. And should also feel like that. And we should all probably do something about that as well. Because it's a bit bad. It's very bad. Mm. So, I, yeah, I thought it was a really good film. And I'm really, really glad that it's been told. And I want it. I want more stories like this to be told. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a perspective given and um, painful. Um, and I, 
I do want to watch more films or see more depictions or documentaries about refugees, anything that is to do with this topic because I don't think I have consumed enough or know enough and it makes me feel terribly guilty. Um, but I think this film is brilliant that it's going to be seen by so many people um, and that it's a hopeful story. And Yusra is, so she's doing really well and she's um, she was she went to the um, Olympics in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, and she was asked to go on the Syrian team, but she she wanted to stay on the refugee team. Wow. Which is so great. That is yeah. very good. So great. Yeah. And yeah. she's also studying film and TV studies in university. Whoa. And busy, busy. Yeah. Love that. She's incredible. She's they both are. They all are. Sarah's in some trouble, as you saw at the end of the um yeah. at the oh, end yeah. of the film, yeah. which is really awful. For trying to help, she's been she's under trial. So hopefully that all gets resolved and um hopefully this also this film also shines a light on that case and it will be helpful to her yeah, as well yeah we've added some links into the show notes of this episode um for you to be able to support sarah um and find out more about what's happening with her currently yeah, yeah. cool great Amazing. thanks so much thanks <laughs> Thank you so much for watching that episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we're going to be watching She Said, which is a new film that is directed by Maria Schrader. Um, it was in cinemas at the end of last year. It might still be in some cinemas, but it also might be on streaming now too. So have a little look and have a watch. It's well worth a watch. And see you next week for more chats. Bye-bye. <laughs>